Hi, this is Pam Pariso with Keller Williams Realty, Southern Tier and Finger Lakes. And in this video, I'm going to do a part two to the seaplane video I did. And it's about Webb Maynard and how he rescued the seaplane that sank in 1972 and that was brought up by the Yellow Submarine in 1990. Well, I have more information and let's explore it with an interview with Webb Maynard's daughter, Kelly. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning. I'm here with Kelly Penzel, and she is the daughter of Webb Maynard. Now, that's not his real name, right, Kelly? Um, his real name is Harold, but they pretty much it was they called him Webb. Imagine my surprise after doing that whole story when I was doing my research to find out if Harold Webb Maynard was still alive. I was shocked and saddened to find his obituary and among his survivors it is you, Kelly. And we've, we've known each other since before I did this video, right? Yeah, yeah, over 10 years. Over 10 years, we've been country yeah. line dancing, out to dinner, <laughs> trivia night. I didn't even know this about your dad. So yeah, he's uh, been a busy, he was a busy man in this day. <laughs> so tell us about your dad overall. Um, overall, he was, he owned his own um, auto body shop out on um, 14. It was Webb's Auto Sales. Um, he used to paint cars, fix them up. And towards the end, he was doing a lot of transmission work. Um, that was just kind of a side job for him. And he sold cars and stuff to him, took him to the auction. His main job was a, a Meyer City fire, fireman. He'd done that for, God, 30 some years, 40 years uh, before he retired as captain. Uh, and at the end, um, even before he retired, he started, he decided he wanted to build a submarine. He's always been a diver, professional diver. Um, dove in Seneca Lake for years with a couple of his buddies. Even during the winter time when it's freezing cold, they went up and dove for things to see what they could find. And of course, he dove professionally for the fire department as well. I found a newspaper article, I can't remember the year, where he and another fellow fireman had found, recovered a woman's purse. She had dropped her purse overboard. And there oh, were the contents yeah. of his the purse laid out and it showed him, so I knew he had he was also rescuing bodies as well, right? Yes, yes he was. Mm -hmm. Now Searching the lake, for bodies. Seneca Lake is very cold, very deep and very dark, is it not? Yes, it Did is. Did you ever talk about that? Um, it gets, you know, it's kind of murky um, depending on how deep he goes. Um, but I know like in perspective, when he dove for bodies, it's harder to find them because they stay low when it's cold like that. Um, so, you know, he has found some that people had asked him to try to find. And there's some that he just, you know, he never, he could never guarantee that he could find the, you know, the people, but he certainly gave it a try and he did find a few. Wow. So he was an adventurer and um, a treasure yeah. hunter too, right? Yeah. They found a lot of, you know, in Seneca Lake, even when they dove, they found a, like, a lot of old glass milk bottles and things like that. Um, on one of the other lakes, Cuca Lake, he found a case of champagne that had been down there. Still, still with a cork intact and everything. Yeah. Did he, um, did he drink you know, it? I think they tried it. That was quite a long time ago, so I don't remember exactly how that kind of went over. <laughs> but so you're his youngest daughter. Yes. And yes. Um, so tell me the story about the yellow submarine. Well, it was he started building it back. When I was in school, he met a man, I think he was lives up in Maine, um, Kittredge. His last name was George, it was George Kittredge. Um, he had the rights to the plans for this particular submarine. And he actually, Dad contacted him um, one time when he was up there traveling. And uh, they became fast friends, had been friends up until, you know, Dad passed. Um, but he had sold dad the rights to build the submarine. So this yellow submarine was built, well, it was painted yellow after. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's clever. And then it was, it was, he had the ability to tow it. 
Yes. With a car. So it's small enough yeah. for what? One or two people? Um, the submarine would hold two people in it. Mm -hmm. Were you ever in it? Yes, I was. <laughs> really? Did you go yeah. in the water? Yeah. I, when he did a dive up in Seneca Lake, I was, uh, or Cuca Lake, I was up there. And he let me go in and he took me down about 75 feet. I didn't know we were even that deep. It didn't feel it, but it was cool. So one of the other parts of the need for a submarine, and I never really thought this out. I just thought you can launch a submarine from the shore, but you can't. You have to yeah. launch, launch it from a tender. Um, the tender Dad built, and he named it uh, Tender Nelly after my mother. Um, but he had built that, and that would tow the submarine out to, you know, the deeper locations. I mean. If he took the saw up on the, the trailer itself, you know, he could launch it in there in the lake with the trailer like you would a boat. But for traveling purposes, to try to get out to the middle of the lakes or go to other lakes and travel out in there, mm -hmm. he would use a tender Nelly to haul it out there because that would then conserve the battery because the submarine is based on battery, you know, the batteries in it to propel it. I see. So that way it didn't use up the battery before I got out there. So the tender Nelly would get it to its location where they were going to dive down so he could stay in the water longer that way. Interesting. So back to the story about when he pulled that Schweitzer seaplane out of the water in yes. 1990. Mm -hmm. um, there was a caption that said there, something like, they're going to have to take me to court to get it. So what is the story after the first video ended? What happened uh, to that plane? Uh, my understanding is that the gentleman that owned it initially decided he wanted it back. Um, the, the, plane, the plane was hauled up to, to our family property, up where the garage was. Um, he kept it up there and the guy was determined he wanted it back and finally I believe it came to a point where dad said well go ahead and take it I have no use for it I did what I wanted to do I brought it out of the lake you know he you know, got the notoriety notoriety for that notoriety and he's famous for it yeah. because he's a, such a treasure hunter mm -hmm. and uh, didn't you say that the owner of that plane actually bugged him to rescue it um, actually, it was Schweitzer's and Schweitzer themselves. I think his name was Don Schweitzer, the original one of the original Schweitzers. He's the one. He he knew my father. They knew each other, and he was the one that kept bugging Dad to at least try to go find it because they knew it was in there, obviously. And, and finally, when Dad's agreed, he's like, "All right, let's do this and get it done." And so, didn't it take years of planning? Uh, yeah, because it's like because of the depth of the plane, trying to figure out how to get it, you know, hauled up there. And then they devised the inner tube system. You know, the divers, my brother and a couple other guys um, were the divers around the area, in, you know, in there to help out with inflating the inner tubes and stuff that were going to help bring this plane up. Interesting. So they they brought it up. They brought it to shore. There were 500 people there. Were you there? Yes. Mm -hmm. What What was it cold? What was that day like? Um, it was a little chilly out that day, um, but it wasn't really that bad. It was more, you know, just the excitement of watching it and everything. I mean, it wasn't freezing out. You had to wear a jacket, but it wasn't too bad. Nice. And now I understand that they were able, there was gasoline in the tanks and what yes, else? Um, he was able to, after putting a little oil in one of the, in the airplane itself, and I don't know the exact location of it, but he was able to take the propeller and crank it over and actually almost start it. It, it wanted to start right up. Wow, that's amazing right there. And then uh, your dad kind of said some funny quotes. The paper said, uh, now maybe people will leave me alone. What did he mean by that? Um, well, my dad was more interested in going off and doing more bigger treasure hunts, looking for sunken ships down in the ocean, down in Florida. Because he actually would go out on the boat. They had sonars and stuff like that. And he'd take the sub out. Um, and there was another bigger boat down there that was like one of the tender um, like my, like the one he built, a tender Nelly basically, but it was a bigger boat that he had down there 
that he was in with a couple other guys that they go out and they look you look at in the ocean under with a sonar to find shipwrecks and stuff and he did technically find some it was a matter of just trying to get down in there and you know depending on the depth to so get he it. was so he was quite an adventurer and um oh yes did he ever <laughs> find the really big treasure um he was never able to bring the big treasures up he was able to find stuff um but he never never got to that point but he lived a full and exciting life and i uh, understand yes. mm -hmm. uh, i understand he passed away when it was in uh 2013 october of 2013. oh it's very sorry but great man um anything else you want to add about your dad um if people want to look for the Shimon County Historical Journal, here's a journal here that was, there's an article in there that um, it was, it was written by um, William Schweitzer himself, by Bill Schweitzer about the unsinkable seaplane. And it tells the story about dad, my father bringing up. Um, it was in the end of, it says in the end of summer of 72, I think is when the plane went down. But then it, it talks about my father getting around to bring it up and stuff. And, and basically the story of it. And then it shows a picture of the tender Nelly, the boat that dad built that hauls it out, that hauls the submarine. Mm -hmm. And there's and a few other, there's a few other pictures. I think there's a few other pictures in there as well. The tender Nelly was yellow also, wasn't it? Yes. Yes, it was. Well, Kelly, thank you so much for sharing the story about your famous dad, the treasure oh, wow. hunter. And um, this will be part two of the seaplane story. And if anyone else has any other pieces to add to this puzzle, perhaps the Schweitzers have their side of the story or knows where the plane is now, please get a hold of me. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you.